college has a lot to offer. New friends, life-changing experiences, and hopefully good career prospects. But it isn't cheap. Experts say long before you pack up the car and head to campus, you should be asking, how am I gonna pay for school? That's a question increasingly on this family's mind. Dara, a high school senior, wants to go to college like her older sister. They don't have all the money in the world, and these days, college is getting increasingly expensive. So what's a teen like Dara to do? Well, I do get stressed over money. It is a little bit overwhelming to think about it all. And there's a lot to think about. Student loans, grants, scholarships. Many students need a combination of these to pay for school. Which is where Donna Rosado comes in. She writes about finances for Consumer Reports. So there's a student that wants to go to a particular school, but he can't or she can't afford it. What do they do? People do not think about the financial fit early enough in the process. You have to think about more than just where it's gonna be, you know, does it have a beautiful dorm, you know, how's the food on campus? Really think about the financial cost. Think about it this way. Financing college is a little bit like buying a car. Schools have a sticker price and a real price. When you go onto the college like websites and you look at the tuition and then they have the housing, the food, the books, and they have like charts and then they're like the total and you're like, but five slides ago you told me that it was this price and now it's like 5,000 more. To get the real price, you have to know where to look. Every school has a net price calculator. That's not as geeky as how it sounds. What it tells you is that here's the sticker price. And then here, based on an estimate of your finances, what you might, what it might cost you. So it'll subtract grants and scholarships that you might get from the federal government. So it'll give you a better estimate of how much it'll really cost you. You can get help from the federal government, states, and the colleges themselves. If you haven't saved enough, you still have options. Make sure you apply for financial aid. A lot of people think they or their family may make too much money um, to get financial aid. That's not true. There's no income limit on it. FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is run by the Department of Education. It doles out more than $120 billion a year in financial aid to students. We're kind of your mid-income people. We definitely qualify. Scholarships are another way to whittle down that sticker price. The biggest source of scholarships and grants comes from colleges themselves. And there are other avenues. All sorts of local businesses and organizations can also help support a student's education. Looking at scholarships focused around cooking and also high school performance-based scholarships. And if that still doesn't have you cruising on the highway to higher education, then loans might. You're limited on how much you can take out from the federal government. That's not enough to pay for school. You might turn to a private lender. A loan can lower the money you put down now, but paying it back can be a decades-long slog. We've seen the cost of college increase, and mm -hmm. people have more problems, particularly with paying back student loans. Some more tips. If you have to borrow, choose federally-backed loans. Read the fine print of the loan agreement so you know what you're responsible for. Only borrow what you need. I'm definitely really excited to go to college and have that whole experience, but I don't want to be paying for it for the rest of my life. Well, Dara, you don't have to. When it comes to finance in college, it pays to be a smart consumer.